Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Now, I have two brand new coolers from Be Quiet. Now, the Be Quiet coolers uh, have a very kind of like soft place in our hearts because at the end of the day, they've been around for quite a while. And that's why they're calling the Pro the Pro 5 because it is the fifth generation of the Twin Tower coolers. But we have an Elite this time around as well. And it's an ever sort of like, it's another sign that Be Quiet are trying to please us RGB lovers with additional lighting. Now obviously with that additional lighting you can turn it off and it doesn't need to stay on unicorn puke, it can be set by your motherboard if you want to wire it up that way. So you do have many options, but they are some pretty funky coolers um, with custom fans as well. Now. When we do start to look at it, I do want to say straight from the get go that the fans are different on both of them. So there's a lot different between them, although the uh, actual core heat sink itself is the same with its seven six millimeter heat pipes. We don't get to see any copper. There's lots of black. And I really, really like the way that they've um, got the fins on the back. But I will bring you in for a closer look. We will look at comparisons in our huge graph so that you can see how they perform against the competition, which is going to be quite a critical point as well. And when we get towards the end, I'll explain to you a little bit more why the price is going to make a bit of a difference for you as well. So I said the uh, heat sink itself was the same on both and it is. Uh, the way that the top attaches is slightly different for um, either of them as well. And the way that the centre fan goes in is fairly similar as well, but the centre fan isn't actually just a fan. It's got all the other bits on it. You can see it's just for the heatsink itself. Now, on the uh, Pro 5, which is the cheaper of the two at £100, the uh, centre fan goes up to 1750 RPM, whereas the outside fan goes up to 2000 RPM. Whereas on the Elite, they are both 2000 RPM, even though they are the um, 135 millimeter fans that we've got here. Now, they can both have the main fan adjusted, as you would expect, to be able to cope with uh, VRMs. But you can see that there are cutouts around the cooler as well. Now, I've done a measurement and I say minimum amount of um, clearance that you're going to get in reality is about 35 millimeters from the motherboard uh, for RAM clearance but you can obviously adjust accordingly and if you've got enormous memory you could also remove the fan altogether and just go for kind of uh, more of an industrial look it's obviously going to affect performance though with this one where there's no RGB you just have the top that goes on it and then the fan on the outside doesn't even have a PWM connector. Uh, it's a custom connector, but it does then go into a PWM. On the Elite, the top comes off, but it's just the outside. And then if you do want to take the middle fan out, the whole thing comes out with the RGB as well, but it is pretty much the same beyond that. One of the other things that I will say as well is even though there's 235 millimeter fans on it and they are custom, this outside one can be adjusted away from your memory as well. The only difference that there's going to be for your memory um, sizing in reality is how far away from the outside of your case you want to go with uh, this fan. Obviously what you want to do is get it down as close to your memory as possible. Probably not the best idea to do it with the uh, system on as I have, but it's just because I wanted to show you the lighting on the top. Now don't forget, you can turn the lighting off if you like, and it's just going to look nice and understated like that. And if it really offends you, you could obviously cut the cable away and everything, and you never have to have it. But if you do want to have it on, then it is just a simple connector onto the motherboard and you can control it with your motherboard software. As I have said, both of these fans run at uh, 2000 RPM. Unless you use the uh, funky switch that I've not mentioned for either of you yet. So if you turn it down to quiet, your maximum fan RPM will be able to go up to 1500. 
but on the uh, P mode, the performance mode, it's up to 2000. There is the switch on this one as well, but where the fans are different, it's it will go down to 1500 RPM from 2000 on this one, and the middle one goes down to 1300 RPM. Now you do need to remember, it is a maximum fan speed. So if you're using a fan profile, uh, or it's plugged into a motherboard header, then it's going to adjust accordingly. It's just the upper ceiling that's going to change, uh, unless you're running at a max RPM, and then you know what it is anyway. Okay then, so performance wise, we do a range of testing. We do an abusive test at 600 RPM. We do a thousand RPM and then we do a max run. And that is literally just the fans running as fast as they possibly can do. Now, one of the things I do want to say right from the get go is amazingly, the heat sink market has had quite a shake up of late. In that, there's a fair bit of competition. Uh, and if you look in the graphs, the two that I'm going to bring your attention to are the Cooler Master Master Air 824 Stealth and then the Deep Cool Assassin. Both of these I have tested very recently and everyone's basically taking punches and ganging up on the NH D15, which right now other manufacturers are able to easily outperform. The graph that I'm most interested in showing you though is the 1000 RPM one, because I don't think you're gonna buy a quite cooler like this and then have it raging away uh, all the time anyway. Sure, for benchmarks and stuff, but for the most part with gaming, you're not going to want your fans blowing at 2000 RPM anyway. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that the majority of you are going to run them on quiet mode, but I do think there's going to be a steady progression there with when you buy a product from Be Quiet with an air to the, we would prefer it to be a bit quieter. One of the things I will say though, is even when you run them at maximum, they're not that loud. But out of the two, the Elite is definitely the one that's going to pit the post for noise in that it is significantly quieter. If you're gonna ask for numbers, I'm just gonna say significantly quieter because I do have a de decibel meter, um, but it picks up so much that uh, I almost need to turn the gain down a bit if there was one. But anyway, very quiet. You can't hear it by the side of me uh, now. And if anything, I can hear the case fans over the cooler. So that should just kind of give you an idea about what's going on. So performance wise, um, with the Cooler Master, the Deep Cool and the Be Quiet in the same graph, you need to pick it apart and you need to have a look um, because it is quite interesting. At 1000 RPM, they're fairly competitive. Once you open up the fan speeds, not so competitive and the gaps open up, but you do need to remember that the other coolers will run their fans that bit harder. Um, I personally thought the Cooler Master would have done a bit better overall because the fans themselves, they did a lot of work on them and I was expecting more. Um, now, I am wondering with Be Quiet because they released their own version of Pro, you know, high RPM fans recently, if there might be like an elite or the next step up for want of a better term, where they're going to put some of those super high RPM fans on. Um, because I'd kind of like to see how it perform, and I'm just not sure how we're going to mount the middle one without them helping us, because I really like to see these with a higher RPM on them. Maybe the sweet spot is about 2000 RPM before it's negating levels of performance, but I digress. I'm just trying to let you have an insight into my thoughts on this one. So there's one glaring problem between these two coolers, and sadly that's the price. And it's not that they're too expensive, it's that the uh, lesser performing one, the one with the mismatch fan, the one without the RGB is only £10 cheaper. And at that point, I would just say to you, just go and buy the 140 uh, millimeter one, the, the Elite, unless you're super, super worried about memory clearance. But if you're worried about memory clearance and you've got tall memory, most people out there are gonna have lights on the top of it or something anyway. And then at that point, you're gonna be covering it with a fan anyway. So I would kind of suggest if you're going down this route, slightly smaller memory, 35, maybe 40 millimeters of uh, height in total, clip it into your board, 
get the heat sink pushed right down to it and then as long as the cooler isn't going to be touching the outside of your case you're not going to have a worry and in case you're wondering because i did have to look it up the overall height is 168 millimeters most cases with a 120 fan at the back you should be okay if you've got a 140 mount at the back you'll definitely be okay uh, but yes overall height of the cooler is 168 mil so that's just if you want to go and uh, cross check with your case to see if it will fit and if you do like i said i think for me the elite is the one it's just got that little extra zing with the uh, lighting on it you can still move the fan up and down anyway and uh, you get the extra performance there if you need it and then at that point i'm just like i think i've pretty much covered it if you're trying to choose between the two spend 10 pound more smile loads